So my career started absolutely by chance, really, straight from uni. I'm supposed to be a curator of an art gallery or a museum because I did my degree in art history down at Goldsmiths, which I absolutely adored. Um, but during that time, I became, um, I mean, writing was my great passion and I became news editor of the uni paper. And uh, something I wrote back in 82, 83, caught the eye of LBC. I mean, it was quite a sort of um, difficult topic. There'd been a particular fire and it became known as the Deptford Fire. And sadly, um, uh, some young people left, um, lost their lives and we, Goldsmiths was sort of on the doorstep. And being editor of the paper at that time, I wrote this story up and it was uh, picked up by LBC. And I went in for my first ever uh, radio interview and emerged from it having been completely rubbish at it, but deciding that, no, I wanted to be on the other side of the desk actually asking the questions. So that was my sort of, you know, light bulb moment. Um, and then after my degree, I, um, back in those days, we, we didn't have mobile phones or anything like that. So I wrote about a hundred letters by hand because my dad told me to, to um, every single radio and TV station uh, across the land and I got my 99 rejections and I just got one editor in Liverpool who said if you happen to be passing by and bearing in mind we lived in West Norwood in South London I wasn't likely to be passing by so I took my £10 pocket money bought a train fare went up there <clears throat> caught him in his lunch hour and um, he said well uh, you've caught me we've got no traineeships nothing but you know you've got 15 minutes to sell yourself as it were and I did and that was the start of it so I started my traineeship which was a great joy. Spent about a year in Liverpool and then uh, wrote off again, very uh, um, old fashioned manner, wrote off to all the, I thought I'd conquered radio now after, after nine months, um, uh, that was that done. And I was clearly ready for TV, age 21. So um, I wrote to all the TV stations again across the land. Everybody rejected me apart from one and it was an editor in Bristol said, if you're passing by, same thing and no jobs going, but two weeks later offered me a job and that was the start of it. And then from there, I was poached by everyone from HTV to TVAM, which was a, a great joy, that five year period down there up until 92. Then obviously that went bust. Um, and then I went to Sky, BBC World, all sorts of places. And, and it, uh, as a reporter and a, uh, a news anchor, and it's a job that's taken me around the world. So my whole memory really surrounding Fountain Studios and being here just comes to me through being friends um, of Sanjeev Bhaskar and Mira Sile. So we go way, way back. And one day I got a call and um, he literally said to me, can you do me a favor? He said, we've got this pilot for a new show. And, and, and at that time they were really, really well known after goodness gracious me and, and, and shows like that. Um, and I said, well, you know, I'm, I'm clearly not in comedy. You know that I'm, I'm a really, really serious news reporter now and I'm in current affairs and you know, what, what do you want me to do? Um, and he went, no, it's really easy. He said, look, if you could just turn up at this time, I can't tell you much about the show, Lisa, but you know, you'd be doing us a huge favor. And I said, well, it's not gonna go out on the telly, is it? And he went, no, no, it's just a pilot. It's just really low key. So I said, is it gonna be an audience? No, no, just, just, you know, we just want to see how it goes. Famous last words. So I turned up full hair and makeup um, and I did not at the time know that it was Mira Sal being made up as granny in the um, dressing room and the makeup room I had no idea the other members of the cast I only I only knew Sanj so I said you're gonna have to give me something you know I've got to prep something um, and he said well it's, it's a sort of family environment it's a house environment and um, you, you just you know take take it as it is but you all you have to do is knock on a front door so I said okay fine and I remember um, because I didn't think it was going to take long I actually had my coat on and I think I think that's in the I think that's in the pilot so I kept, even kept my coat on um, and I knocked at this door and he opened the door and what transpired after that I literally <laughs> thought have I landed on planet Zog I had no idea what was happening to me people were coming up and literally pouring my coat and like snuggling up to me and I, of course I had no idea it was Mira because she was so amazingly made up as this old lady and um, Sandra was just asking me really silly questions <laughs> and um, I just kept being fed food throughout and and in a way, it was just like being at home, you know, being in a typical Asian family, sort of all these mishti and all these lovely things <laughs> came out and samosas and um, very, very sweet tea. I do, uh, I do remember that. And being um, quite a greedy girl, um, as this, this food and the bickies and everything kept coming, I kept eating it, not knowing really, forgetting totally 
that it was all being filmed. So I think everything that sort of come out, came out on air was um, just me. Was, I was just eating my way through this half an hour. Um, but it was very, very funny and I did enjoy taking part in it. So what I think struck me immediately was the fact that I was knocking on a front door. So this was clearly somebody's house and I had been told it was the Kumars at 42. So that was obviously the environment that they'd picked. And um, as a guest in the house, you were gonna come into the lounge and see the, I remember there was a water feature and I just thought that was completely bonkers, but brilliantly Asian. Um, <laughs> and um, of course all the, uh, the food was laid out and it was a particular kind of sofa and a particular set of curtains. And I remember thinking at the time, this set is really clever. Um, and then coming out onto the stage area, which was just like a continuation of the house, um, my first reaction was I had no idea there was going to be a live audience there. So I was completely taken aback. And then um, all the food kept coming at me whilst this bizarre interview was taking place. And then um, I think I sort of got the idea of the show that um, Mira, who I didn't know was Mira as the granny, they were trying to match make Sanjeev because obviously he was supposed to be this um, sort of young Asian guy who couldn't get a girlfriend, <laughs> which I just thought was really funny. Um, and the questioning was really funny, but I thought the set was really clever. I think at one point the, ch the chair, or, or unless I remember it in later episodes, it had lights all the way up round it that, that flashed. So <laughs> that's even worse when you're being fed, uh, you know, you're, you're drinking tea and you're eating uh, biscuits and then you've got, you're sitting on a flashing chair and you're supposed to be answering, well, they weren't particularly um, serious questions. There was one question, is there anything you want to, what did he ask me? Is there anything left you want to do in your career? And I said, yes, I'd like to read the news in a James Bond film. And as these words were coming out of my mouth, I was thinking, what else am I saying that for? That's just ridiculous. <laughs> and the look on his face and even he's thinking. And then he asked me another question that was bizarre. He said something like, so um, what do you, uh, I know you've got a toddler, what do you call him? I said, well, I call him by his name. He said, no, we're Asian. Have you got a nickname? I said, yeah, fat boy. And he went, why do you call him fat boy? Because he's a fat and he's a boy. <laughs> so he's, I never speak like that. So he obviously, as a mate, just, you know, got me into my own comedy little element. Um, when I um, came to take part in the Kumars, I, um, I actually thought, bizarrely, that it was going to be quite serious, you know, that the kind of people that they were going to invite on were actually quite serious boys and girls. And I remember doing the pilot with Clive Mantle, who'd done Robin of Sherwood, and I really liked him as, a, as an actor. And um, I thought I was coming on to be like, you know, quite a, a serious news person. And it was only afterwards that it dawned on me that we were there merely to be stooges and to be, you know, made out to be complete idiots. Because the more you ask somebody to eat and drink on set, it's all about the facial expression. And because I had had no prep for this show, um, I did actually come out looking like a complete idiot. And I think that was the whole concept because they'd obviously done their scripting and everything around that and probably knew what your reaction was going to be if you had a mouthful of biscuit and a cup of tea, you know, slurping yourself all down you. Um, and when I started to watch the show afterwards, when it aired, uh, and obviously went into several series and I saw the calibre of guests and they were amazing. You know, everybody from like Stephen Fry, Patrick Stewart, Kylie Minogue, Mariella Frostra, Michael Parkinson, you know, some really, really big names. And they all look like complete idiots, I thought. And I thought, what a brilliant concept. What a genius comedy concept. And uh, they just, it was this whole thing about catching you unawares, serious actors and news people and, um, just catching you out with questions and doing it so cleverly but deliberately and it was just all about the the reaction of that guest really really clever afterwards um they invited us for drinks um wherever it was you know backstage or the green room or whatever and i did see some rather important looking execs pouring over this camera and they were watching that show that pilot back immediately um, and I learnt later that it was actually, it would have been the commissioning editors, you know, who were quite sort of, you know, very famous execs, really. And Sanj said, we're, they're already um, checking the tape to see, um, see if it's any good. And I said, oh, God, why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you tell me this was so important? I would have done better. And he went, no, no, it was fine. So this after party continued. And I looked across and there was a, a, a woman I think I, I vaguely recognised. And I went up to her and I said, goodness me, you're not Mary. And she looked at me, she went, Lisa. And it was my best friend from school when I was 16, doing my A-levels. It was his mum, who was a set designer and quite a well-known one. 
And we're just looking at each other, eating again. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? Um, and after all those years, that evening, that pilot got me back in touch with my best mate from school in South London. And then later on, um, Sanjeev told me that uh, the Kumars was going to be commissioned. So I was absolutely thrilled. Um, and then I think I asked whether I could be paid. Because why not? When I got to the Fountain Studios, I knew that they were quite famous and uh, obviously I was quite excited to, to, to be there for the, for the night of the recording of the pilot of the Kumars. And I remember coming through quite plain, you know, double doors outside, quite a plain sign, but then just entering this magical atmosphere, um, the green room, the hair, the makeup, seeing all the other actors getting ready and not being from that environment myself. You know, it's all really glamorous. Um, and then going on to a obviously specifically built set for the Kumars, which was amazing because it was this sort of double, um, double set in a way, I'm going to call it. You know, you've got the lounge area. And then I walked down this corridor and then came out onto a stage. And I had no idea there was going to be this live audience. And of course, there were thousands of people just sitting there watching this pilot and the look on my face. I'm sure it's just one of absolute shock. Um, it was just so clever. But the studio was vast. The people sitting out in front of me, it was just this vast arena. <laughs> this place is absolutely enormous. And uh, when I've just come back today, it's all just come back to me. And of course, you know, here's the iconic X Factor and Britain's Got Talent. All that is done here now. And, and, but my memory of it is all those years ago, doing what I thought was this humble little comedy show, uh, which went on to be enormous as well. My abiding memory of Fountain Studios is that it allowed me, coming from my news and current affairs world, to enter this whole world of light entertainment, even if it was just in this little brief moment of being in the Kumars at 42 pilot. And for that, I am hugely honoured and very grateful. In all honesty, I think I'm really sad to see somewhere like Fountain go, even though I've only been there ever for a very brief period. I do know how important it is in the light entertainment sphere um, and certainly to my friends in that side of the business. Um, I just think it's a huge shame that somewhere like this is, is going to be no more. Um, I don't know where they're all going to go because all the big shows have such big audiences. Um, and sometimes I think we've just got enough tower blocks of flats in London. <laughs>